some begin by having each of you introduce yourselves, first name and last name. So Anne gets a sense of, and we all get a sense of who's here in the room. So the first and last name is because uh, I'm a musician by first orientation. And when I hear both names, I then have, it goes in and I can remember as the melody. Whereas one name is too short for me to make a, a, a music from it. So that's why when I meet people, again, I always say their last name. But, you know, it's just because that's how it gets in for me. Paul and John, Joe and Carwell, 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 Effie Bass, Brennan, Carwell, Cartmel, Cartmel, Chris Hosky, Patricia O'Rourke. Robert Crawford. Is it Denise? And your last name? Hagen. Hagen. Um, Bridget Hirschfeld. Feld. Joshua, Jerry Bassey, Anya, Danica, Tom Holton, Vaughn, Holton, Holton, right, um, Teresa, M Mears, and this is supposed to be the easy one. <laughs> Janet, Janet, that's right. Uh, Alan, Selena Reed, Walt Logan, um, Heather, Reed Bass, Jenny Hutch, and Mary Seth. And I hope you. I do that as a way to give information to myself about my level of anxiety. And so I can calm myself that uh, I will know you the next time I see you. So thanks for letting me do that. Show off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> The other times you've been at the ANSPAR conferences and workshops I've been with you, from time to time you've um, told some little stories from your time at Beacon and Max would do the same and I often felt like a, you know, just some, something would come to life in me about those times and um, I just know those stories are still very alive in you. And, this is an invitation, really, to bring some of those to us as a group. Right, we had breakfast together, and I shared a few that I'm not going to share. <laughs> um, <laughs> unless I warm up. You know, uh, male students would come and just fall in love with Zerka. That did not go over well. <laughs> because she was the, the good mother, the muse, the, uh, she, would, she saw the students more than he did. My degree was in library science, library and information science. And I had a second degree, which was uh, in communications. And the, the focus was on interpersonal communication. So I had two master's degrees, but no clinical credential. And I regret that. But um, I did work in a psychiatric hospital 
for a number of years, and the psychiatrist always referred patients to me, and they said, we'll do the paperwork. And this is a story about um, being the director in residence. I ran the morning sessions, or I was present always for them. Some, somebody else who wanted to practice uh, warming up group or whatever could be in charge of it. Um, and Zerka would come in in the afternoon, and sometimes she'd come in in the evenings, uh, or sometimes we would go down to the house and spend the evening with the doctor, and he would, you know, talk about any number of subjects. So one morning, I'm doing a session. And um, so Jerry, I need you here. So you, you can have this, bring your chair, birthday. Bring your chair, do this in action. And, um, oh, Anya, this will be a good role of practice for you. You have, you have uh, arrived at the institute in the middle of the night from Sweden, and you've had quite a few drinks on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and then upstairs they tell you just to go on down to the theater. Okay, so, you know, and you have on very high heels. Oh, no. And so you come up oh, you come up the back. You know. And so you're making sound. Yes. And I'm doing, I'm doing a session. And so uh, we're in the middle of processing. And uh, and so uh, uh, welcome. We're just in the middle of uh, processing. And so what you say to me is, oh, go to hell. <laughs> oh, go to hell. And you sit here. <laughs> and then you lean over to this gentleman here and say, you're very attractive. <laughs> and then you look around and you see some more good looking men and women. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to like ears. Oh. <laughs> and you were the director. So we're just going to process, finish process this, uh, and then we'll introduce you to <laughs> She's already introduced herself. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so let's go back to what you say. Okay. Go to hell. Oh, I've already been there and I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Effie, we're gonna, would you be Marina? And they said, this goes on all day. And then in the evening, we go down to, to be with Marina. And so you can have your seat there. And thanks. And there's a big table in front of, so just take a foot chair. And so there's a table there. And we're all sitting around. And I am thinking, oh boy, she's going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I can't wait to see Moraine on my hand handling this one. <laughs> oh, what a relief. All day dealing with this, you know, chaos training. And so, so watch the roll, because I'm going to do the Moreno. And so the group's sitting around. Welcome. You are so welcome here. It's lovely to have you. How was your travel? Tell me about, you know, coming from Sweden. Oh, do you know that this Oh, that's wonderful. 
And I continue as Miranda to talk with you in the most extraordinary, welcoming, and respectful way. And um, so would you do something? So I'm watching this, and she's completely saying, and some of the answers that she gives, she's brilliant, and she's warm, and it's like watching another totally different person. And I say to myself, don't be so quick to judge. I have to say that to myself a lot. It's not something that you can say once and it lasts for So just stand as Marianne for a moment. Just stand on you. And so I just want as as Marianne, thank you for being in my life. And thank you, Jail, for for demonstrating uh, something that I want to take into my whole being in my body. It was a totally spellbinding moment. Thank you both. Thank you. Uh, any comments or questions about that? Responses? I just remember a trainer coaching somebody in exactly the same thing. If somebody if somebody comes into the group in an inopportune moment, welcome them. I, I, just, I remember watching that teaching subsequently. Yeah. Well, it was always very hard for me because my uh, father was a superintendent of a railroad and he carried in his pocket, you know, the schedule of trains and when they're supposed to arrive. And um, it was very important to him that trains arrived on time. <clears throat> and we had to go to bed when a certain train passed the house. <laughs> and we always hoped it would be late. <laughs> <laughs> so there was this conflict. And, um, but embedded in my person is this wanting to start on time and wanting to say good things to go the way it's supposed to. And I have this huge interrupt when somebody comes in. And it uh, knocks me out of my uh, bearings. And I was, you know, I got lots of practice. <laughs> because the steps, you know, clomp down. Um, but I also had an outlet there, you know. One of the things, that, I don't know if you've seen pictures of the stage, three levels of stage, and the first level is really deep. So you had to know, you had to be, that you were taking a big step towards the truth. Mm -hmm. The next level was wide, but not so high. And it was for walking and finding your soliloquy. The top was for action. And over on one corner was a rolling uh, chalkboard with a huge hole in it where somebody had socked it. And you always had to write around. <laughs> it's just evidence. And so 
So, uh, uh, to preserve some of the accoutrements of the stage, there were these two poles that supported uh, a balcony. So you could go up and stand on the balcony and look down, so you could be in heaven, or you, this was hell, or whatever. And at the back of the room, there's another stage. I mean another balcony. The back of the stage, if this is, uh, so there was this, a door to outside. And behind me was a wall. And the steps up, upstairs. And in this corner was a stack of broken metal chairs. And you could get it right. And you could go over to that stack, begin to pick them up, and slam them against this wall. And the clash and the bang was so wonderful. There are people who pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars to go to the Rand Institute and sling those chairs. They couldn't get rid of them. They just kept adding to the pile. Because it was, you know, people needed that expression. Um, I don't know if people replicated that in their own training institute. I saw one in Wadley. Okay. Yeah, there was um, a hole in the wall where someone had a chair. Right. So, um, you know, uh, the audience was all away. But if you were on stage as an auxiliary, and you encouraged insight. Um, you had to be self-protective, and the group was protected. <coughs> and I never saw anyone injured by that. Um, so that's um, one of the stories. Yes, Joshua. I'd just like to say, Anne, that I, when you were repeating our names. I was deeply moved that you had that ability to remember each one of us after only one, one round. And when I was, in, was met by Max Clayton at Stanley Tops, a residential workshop in Sydney, for the first time, he made me feel like um, He was speaking to me personally and he saw me and he knew me and he'd known me forever. Mm. And that was that had never happened to me before. People would say, uh, I know you won't remember me, but I met you in such and such a place. And I was always so horrified that they would say that the first thing to me. Because of course they remember. Uh, but it, it's interesting, it's happening more and more. Mm -hmm. I'm on a, a statin, just a little bit, but it really affects memory in the most sickening way. So, largely it's still true, but um, I still want to acknowledge the person. I know that. And, um, and it's, you know, fully the story, the memory of it, where it was, what we ate, you know, the full picture. And we, we all have that capacity. We block it. And so, um, and anxiety and stress can block it. Can I ask you something about the use of the balcony? Do you have any memories of the use, how the balcony was used? It was mostly when people came from South America. <laughs> they always wanted to do these psychodramas about um, you know, love and war. You know, you know, big things that were uh, 
symbolic and um, very real to them. So there would be these climbing the stage every time to roll reverse. <laughs> but, you know, it became a quality. It was also somewhat true of um, the people from Sweden. People who? From Sweden. 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 You know, if you've ever seen any of those Swedish films, you get the idea. Before Moreno died, and people were coming, and one of the people that came to say goodbye uh, ended up directing me in a drama. And um, before every role rehearsal, he had a little pad and he would write out what he wanted the old to say and give it to me. I just want to be a little girl. And then yeah, I had never seen that. <laughs> Since. <laughs> and evidently, it, it was part of his security. But I don't know. It may have worked for him. You know, people take the method and do what works. Queen Mary Hospital, I got a large room converted. And it had uh, switches for different light, different kind of light. Yes. And uh, we managed to get the hospital board to agree to having a one-way screen. So for training purposes, people who were a bit frightened going into the room could see through the one-way screen what was involved. And that could be very helpful. And we didn't have a balcony as such, but I thought balconies were important. So we, we had the structure on uh, casters in the corner. And uh, you walked up to it. And you know, it might only be three feet tall, but when you're standing on it, you're six foot tall, you're nine foot, away, your eyes are nine foot up. It was very high. And that was very successful. Yes. Now for the sad news. <coughs> it's been demolished. First, we made the only special psychodrama unit in New Zealand. Move towards each other. Well, we had a good run. You are to keep it good in the Had a good run with it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Had a good run. I don't have any photographs of this realized seeing the ones of the beacon. No. Mm. However, <laughs> can't remember everything. And others of you can go in and get in two. Thank you, Kate. And do the same thing. And let it, let it go. It it is it. Again. Grab a partner. <laughs> and go ahead and have a moment right, of gratitude. <laughs> You're in feelings. You're in feelings. Go to it. But what's one of the things that she took from that time into her work and life and is still taken forward to the future? So I uh, often wanted to change the word sociology because uh, when you talk, talk about it, people get the idea that it's all measurement. <clears throat> I had an experience at, at the Moreno Institute of something called remote drawing. I was watching a session and a schema f f came down between me and what I was what was happening on the stage. And I got this message to pick up my notebook and draw very carefully that picture. And there were stars, and there was a tree, and there was a frame, and there was a box with another star in it. And then I had a swirling white and yellow light experience. It took me back to when I was a counselor at a camp, the day before the eclipse of the sun, and we were all making these little cereal boxes, you know, to have the star constellations. And I was a counselor. And so, 
I remembered that experience and then I put the paper down and I, and I went away and I finished the drama and then we went out for pizza that night. We were sitting around the table and one of the women from the Netherlands said, do you know there's going to be an eclipse in the sun tomorrow? And I go, We've got to go back to the theater. And so we grab our pizzas, put them in boxes, and everybody goes back to the, the, the stage. And I find my notebook, and I said, look. Look at this picture. This happened this morning. I forgot about it. And so, uh, I wanted to know what, what had happened. You know, I had that question with Moreno. How do we know things without knowing things? And uh, where did this come from? What does it mean? What, what is this drawing about? And um, as J. Allen Zerka said, it's your welcome to the universe. So, uh, thank you. I, I put it on my car, I painted it on my car, and hoped that somebody else would give me an answer, what it was about. <coughs> and, um, excuse, excuse me, Anne, on your car? I made a copy of it on the side of my car. Your car? Yes, yeah, so that, you know, <laughs> somebody would ask me, or say, oh, you're it. <laughs> that didn't work. So where do I want to go in the future? And it's, um, you know, there, there's a place not far from where I live in Virginia, in Monroe, Monroe, Virginia, where they study remote viewing, remote drawing, remote writing. And I believe in Moreno. You know, I think I said the other morning. So I think there's a place for psychodrama, for where I'm going into the future, it has to do with um, honoring other dimensions of people's experience um, and how it affects, you know, the messages that we get. That there's, we can get messages from more people than our parents, you know, for instance. <laughs> and thank you for being and uh, putting up with my voice. <laughs> well, I just will whet the appetite. <laughs> well, I just, uh, I mean, I don't have a huge number of stories. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.